Hi, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and you are watching Headlines You May Have Missed for January 5th, 2018. We go through the top headlines that maybe are not being talked about everywhere else, and we we try and see how many we can get through before the 20-minute period of time has ended. So on this show, Somalia targets Somaliland, blockchain and the sharing economy, ghost guns surge, the whale panda problem, militia gun rights, GOP and Planned Parenthood, and more on this edition of headlines you may have missed. The first headline we're going to get to is the new political tactics of Somalia to destabilize Somaliland's independence. Somaliland, by the way, it's, uh, well, it's, it's sort of maybe pseudo stateless, uh, governance that has been going on there since 1994. And, you know, you hear the joke, if you don't like it here, go to Somalia. And, uh, well, Somaliland is northern Somalia. So this is from Somalilandpress.com. Following the peaceful presidential election in Somaliland last year, the Somalia's federal government is using new political tactics to create instability in Somaliland, where it sent its federal minister of planning, to the eastern districts of, of Sanag region, which Puntland, Puntland claims but belongs to Somaliland. The last visit of federal minister to Somaliland territory is a signal of a political intervention for which the Mogadishu administration is conspiring on Somaliland's political stability in the region. Clearly the person who wrote this is English is not their 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 first language and that's fine. I'm still I'm still understanding what they're saying. This is really sparking Somaliland's patience over Somalia aggression that Somalia is not happy with the Somaliland transmission, transition for the democratic election that made the eyes of the world to be on Somaliland and realize the fact a peaceful democratic election was done in a way for which Somalilanders deserve to be recognized and respected, but is should be worth to be paralyzed. Okay, should not be worth to be paralyzed. Somalilanders will never accept any political intervention from Farnyaho administration. The new government is elected. Well, then it cuts off there. But uh, <laughs> essentially, you know, uh, a lot of these regions, you look at what's happening in uh, Rahava there in Syria. It's another kind of pseudo stateless uh entity they have to they have to reckon with being surrounded by state actors in somaliland i think it's it's kind of well, it's kind of dancing on that edge of you know they want to be as stateless as possible but at the same hand they recognize that uh recognition from other states is kind of essential to offer some degree of protection from aggressive states like for instance Somalia. I will, by the way, Somaliland is one of those places that we're we're tracking regularly on iState.tv as well as Rahava. How blockchain could build the next sharing economy unicorn. Ooh. Why are you doing that? Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, share economy unicorns like Uber, Airbnb, and Upwork. By the way, unicorn is like, you know, where if you're, you see like a certain amount of growth, and then boom, you get this big old unicorn horn. That's what they're talking about. Are all centralized platforms whose owners control the network. Okay. So they say they're not a true share economy. A true sharing economy removes intermediaries and facilitates exchanges between different individuals. While Uber, for instance, allows individuals to participate in a larger economy, it remains a profit-driven centralized institution. I, I don't have a problem with profit. I don't, I don't get that. Uh, comment uh, how blockchain can create a true sharing economy a true peer-to-peer -peer sharing economy should not have an intermediary who dictates pricing 
on whose authority, uh, terms and conditions, and takes hefty transaction fees on whose authority. A blockchain network can enable a decentralized peer-to-peer ride-sharing economy where the free market set prices and determine this based on demand and supply. I would argue, I, I mean, obviously, I would be more for a blockchain network rather than Uber, which is more more centralized. I'm for decentralized networks, but you may find that there might be some, like you know, some certification issues that will help feel peel, 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 make people feel better about getting in your car. So if you're going to have a certification system of some sort, you're probably going to have some sort of fees involved to be able to get that certification. But be that as it may, make sure that you go to isheadlines.com. And you can find all of the links to all of the stories that we talk about on the show. So you could look at this in a little bit more detail. This is on coinsquare.io. The rise of untraceable ghost guns. Now, this story is a Wall Street Journal story. And when you go to the link for the story, you'll find that it it doesn't let you go there and read it in full. You have to get it. It's behind a paywall. So I found another story, which is back from November, which kind of is, is along the theme. <laughs> and, uh, this, this is in guns.com. A Republican state re- representative wants to add specific weapons, allowances, and a public marksmanship program. Oh, okay. Never mind. This is a different story. Uh, did I click off of that? See, when you do these things live and you, you, uh, okay, here it is. Sorry, I went. I went. When we're going to get to that story in a little bit. So this is actually from NewYorkTimes.com. The websites GhostGunner.net and GhostGuns.com allow customers to bypass background checks and build unregistered far unregistered firearms without serial numbers. The guns are legal as long as they are intended for personal use, according to Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Individuals cannot sell or distribute firearms unless they are licensed by the Bureau. Uh, It goes on, because homemade guns cannot be tracked, it's hard to know just how prevalent they are. And, of course, then they're going to go and say, and, you know, you're you're seeing an increasing number of these homemade guns showing up and shooting scare, scare, fear, fear. I think where they're leading here is they would like to see some sort of legislation that criminalizes people making their own guns. And if they do that, they'll simply drive the creating of guns homemade underground. And you'll just see more criminals using them and and less, quote-unquote, lawful people using them in a lawful way. I, I put air quotes around the term lawful but it, it's it's you know ghost guns are a form of anonymity if you will if the government can't track who has what guns that's not very cool for government government oh they hate anonymity and we, we did a show yesterday on is daily and our our last segment which was with Lou Sander our last segment is uh, off the leash and yeah we talked about the the anonymity fear in in the context of uh, the rise of uh, private coins, private cryptocurrencies like Monero. So, yeah, they're they're afraid, and they're trying to begin to get that fear out there. And then, Now, what they're afraid of is the anonymity. What they want you to be afraid of is that these guns are going to kill everybody in your neighborhood, and if we don't pass laws to stop it, we're all going to die. What they really are targeting is anonymity. That's the real problem here. Coinbase, or or no, yeah, Coinbase, missing funds, see whale panda threaten legal action. So in a tweet, this is from bitcoinist.com, and it says today, this is actually from, I, I, I caught this story last night. In a tweet today, the personality claimed a withdrawal request to a euro denominated Serpa bank account had failed to materialize despite being requested December 12th. Doesn't know what went wrong that day, but it looks really bad. I'm close to taking legal action, he announced, tagging Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong. And then he said, update on Coinbase. SEPA withdrawal, still nothing. No reply from support on our Coinbase. That's a Reddit thread. You can find hundreds of posts by people missing withdrawals from the 12th. Don't know what went wrong that day, 
but it looks really bad. I'm close to taking legal action at Brian Armstrong. SEPA payments generally clear within two or three days, suggesting Coinbase's three-week delay is a result of in-house issues. December 12th saw a halt to trades amid an unexpected tick in volume. I don't remember, but I think, was that the day that they they put Bitcoin Cash on? I don't remember. You know who would know, though? Uh, Kurt. I can't, I can't say your last name. i got to get it down. But anyway, I'll just say Kurt. Uh, you, if you go to the Facebook page, the Sovereign, Sovereignty Network, the Sovereignty Network, uh, now he has been under the weather. He missed yesterday, so I think he'll be on today. If he's not on today, it will be my Monday. Every day, Monday through Friday, unless he's sick, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, he has Crypto Corner Live. I listen to it all the time and I will be going there after I'm done doing this show to to listen to it and he, he'll be, he'd be able to tell you a lot more about this I'm sure uh, so so coinbase has some issues that they're going to have to address we'll 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 track this and see if there's any follow-up on this uh, Arizona lawmaker seeks to guard gun rights by expanding militia protections. This is a story that I inadvertently went through to when I was doing the ghost gunner story. Uh, this is from guns.com. A Republican state representative wants to add specific weapon allowances and a public marksmanship program to the broad definition of the Arizona state militia. The four pack of legislation pre-filled for the 2018 session by representative Dar David Stringer aims to revive the composition and protected equipment of the unorganized militia. That's a key word, unorganized militia. You could pretty much say anybody's in an unorganized militia, which under state constitution currently consists of all capable citizens. Well, there you go. They, you can't get any broader than that. Aged 18 to 45. Oh, only to 45. Oh, that sucks. I'm, I am youth. That's how, when people say how old I am, I am youth. But within your petty, uh, narrow definition of time, I am 49, so I'm not part of this. That sucks. You're going to have to expand the definition of all capable citizens from from age 18 to 45 for to, I'm going to say age 13 to 100. <laughs> Stringer's proposal includes three bills. I'm not going to read their name, numbers, and you can go to isheadlines.com and you'll find the link to the story. You can read it for yourself, as well as a constitutional amendment that would remove the upper age. Oh, there you go. Upper age. There you go. Thank you, Stringer. Thank you for that. Get us oldies in there. Although I am youth, but, you know, within your, you know, chronological myopic mindset, uh, I'm old. Uh, so I need protection. <laughs> I need protection. Well, that's a clever approach to 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 <laughs> the gun protection. Next story: GOP president and Congress still funding Planned Parenthood. So this is from Creators. dot com. I am committed to defunding Planned Parenthood as long as they continue to perform abortions and reallocating their funding to community health centers that, centers that provide comprehensive health care for women, Trump wrote in a September 2016 letter to pro-life leaders. Planned Parenthood has now released its 2016-17 annual report. It says its affiliates perform 321,384 abortions in the fiscal year that ended September 30th, 2016. And I believe, I believe, uh, I don't think it's any less. It's 10% of those abortions are on uh, fetuses that are beyond the 20 week period. I don't know if you've ever looked at what a fetus looks like at 20 weeks, but I highly recommend you do it because. Uh, that means 32,000 fetuses after week 20 were, were part of that figure. It also says Planned Parenthood received $543 million in government money in the year that ended on June 30, 2017. So, you know, 
here comes the new boss, same as the old boss kind of thing, you know? It's still it's still getting funded, so I would say that it's not a top priority for the Trump administration to do something about. So we actually have time. We got through the main headlines. We have time to get through maybe one, maybe two more. So Mark Zuckerberg is right to explore the potential of the blockchain for Facebook. Now, this is interesting when we get to the headlines that go beyond the main headlines. I don't know quite what I'm going to get when I click on the link. So this is from TechCrunch. And it says, in what is Mark, Zuck Mark Zuckerberg's now traditional New Year's speech? Oh, gosh. He has a traditional New Year's speech with that with that bowl cut boy bro hand ha haircut thingy? Okay. The Facebook Supremo pledged to fix the social network's many problems, which bubbled up in 2017. Uh, let's see. Zuckerman said he also plans to study encryption and the blockchain to see how best to use them in our services. That statement comes amid a period of crypto frenzy with the cryptocurrencies themselves rising in value significantly. Dude, he is not. I don't care. I don't care what this article even suggests. This guy is not going to switch Facebook over to some sort of decentralized blockchain platform. There's no freaking way because you're going to lose so much of the control that he has now. And this is, that's not Mark Zuckerberg. He's not a guy that gives up control m m uh, very easily. And and the I would say he fits into that uh, that neo liberal camp that believes that the best way to transform society to be more progressive is to use the the the, the power of commerce to do so. So I seriously doubt that this is going to happen. But but I I don't know. I think he's just throwing a bone out there. I I don't even know why he would make the statement. Uh, but they continue here in his post. Zuckerberg makes mention of international censorship and, in theory, a decentralized service could circumvent such measures, such, China's, such as China's blocking of Facebook and Twitter or Iran's recent clampdown on Instagram and Telegram. Yeah, so, yeah. And then, okay, there you get into, for example, Steemit is a Reddit-like decentralized social network that operates on the blockchain. I got to say, I was very skeptical of Steemit for a long time, but you know what? I'm starting to get more active on Steemit, and yeah, I think I think things things like Steemit might actually get Zuckerberg. That's that's a good point there. So if 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 Zuckerberg starts to see other social networks rise that are built on the blockchain, uh, the the trade-off of, okay, I may have to surrender some controls, but by surrendering some controls, at least I hold on to some controls. So in that case, maybe he would consider the blockchain. And I think that's all we have time for. So we got to one more story beyond the top stories here. And I would encourage you to go to isheadlines.com. You'll see the headlines for today as well as the headlines every Monday through Friday. And you can find all kinds of stories are yourself. Just briefly, some of the headlines that we didn't get to. North Korea hackers suspected to be behind Monero mining. Is this the year weaponized AI bots do battle? In Mishokan, people are self-governing without political parties for a new life. And it was written by someone who didn't have a... a English as a as a primary language, the the English is kind of rough, but what's going on there is fascinating. I'm going to have to start looking at, at, at what they're doing there. SEC says reversal of main studio rule takes effect January eighth and more, and that's 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 all the time we have left, folks. I am Paul Gordon, and I am with isTV.com. Excuse me, is <laughs> iState.tv. And uh, this has been headlines you have missed. You may you may have missed January fifth, twenty eighteen.